Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel here on YouTube and on the e-learning portal. My name is Jimmy Smith, and thank you for stopping by. So we are going to be looking at a video here on the WSET Level 3 syllabus, and this is starting the chapter on winemaking. So this is the common elements of winemaking and maturation. That's chapter 7 onwards in your textbook. That's page 43 onwards. Um, as always, if you do have any comments, questions or concerns, please do get in touch either directly through our e-learning portal website, which is winewithjimmy.com, or you can get in touch via social media that you see at the bottom of every slide, or you can comment here on YouTube uh, just below this video. Please make sure that you subscribe. OK, so without further ado, we'll begin with the common elements of winemaking and maturation. And this is focusing on the constituent parts of a grape. So we're looking at the main parts of the grape because we'll need to identify these because we'll talk about them a lot throughout the winemaking process. So it's a good idea to have a firm understanding before we begin all of that. OK, so let's rock and roll. First up, then, we're going to be identifying and annotating key parts of a peeled grape. And this is what you will see here in front of you. So the diagram here shows you a peeled grape, um, sort of a cross section and a bit of a skin being peeled there because we're going to identify these key parts. Now, the largest voluminous part of the grape is what we call the pulp or the flesh. Uh, now, it's listed in your text as pulp, but you may see it written elsewhere as flesh. Uh, so this is really the largest part and incorporated here. There's three main bits they wish you to know that we find within the pulp, and that is water, sugar and acid. So first up, water. So water is by far the largest single component in the grapes pulp. And of course, consequently, that would be found as the largest component in the wine as well. Secondly is sugar. And sugar is very important, of course, as yeast will use it to ferment it into alcohol. And this is the second largest component in the grape. And then the third part here is acid. And the acids, we find numerous acids, but there are two major acidities which WSET on this syllabus wish you to understand. The greatest is tartaric. So tartaric acid has the most in the grape. Secondly, we have malic acid. So tartaric and malic acid. Uh, both of these will be present in the final wine. Um, also, please bear in mind that tartaric is the biggest by quite a way. Malic is a secondary acid. So when we talk later about malolactic fermentation or sometimes known as mal malolactic conversion, it is only the conversion of a secondary acid. So you may change the shape of the wine a little bit, but there will still be tartaric acid in the final wine. So that is the pulp or otherwise known as flesh. Then the kind of heart of the grape is what we call the seeds or the pips. So it's more commonly seen as seeds, but you may see it written as pips as well. So this is the center of the grape and it contains tannin and also bitter oils, very, um, very high levels of bitter oils. So it is very important as a winemaker to handle grapes very carefully as not to break these seeds because you may find more bitter oils, which can, of course, cause consequences for your final wine. Uh, so handling your grapes and pressing with care is very important. And some grape varieties have more uh, seeds in the centre or larger seeds in the centre than others. There is a variety that immediately springs to mind, uh, which is from Piemonte in northwest Italy, which is called Grignolino. You don't need to know this for the level three syllabus, but it's interesting because if you take Grignolino and then uh, take it from the dialect it came from, which is Grignole, Grignole actually comes from uh, a meaning pips. So the people called this the pippy grape because it had so many pips in the centre. 
So contain tannin and bitter oils in the seeds. Next up, connected to the vine are the stems and stalks. Uh, so stems are what's mentioned in your text. It can be called stalks as well. Uh, these stems contain tannins and they're available to the winemaker if the grapes that come into that winemaking facility are hand harvested. So that means a bunch of grapes with the stems intact. And they will only use those or think about using those if those stems are ripe, if they have turned into sort of a brownish color. Green would indicate that they're underripe and may impart bitterness, a uh, very astringent character into the final wine. Then we have really the security system of the grape, which holds it all together, the skins. Uh, so this is the layer of the grape, of course. Uh, a grape's skin and the area immediately below it, so that's immediately underneath it, which is uh, connected to the peripheral vascular bundles, which are like the veins that you see in the top of the pulp. These contain a high concentration of flavor compounds, which in turn will give each grape variety its signature characteristic. So these are where the flavors are really found from the grape itself. There are further flavors to be produced through fermentation, but this is from the grape. And of course, there are many different types of Vitis vinifera, which all have different flavor profiles and pro, uh, flavor compounds to them. It is for this reason as well, because it's found on the skins and close to the skins, that skin contact wines, uh, for example, reds, um, will have more obvious flavor compounds than mo most whites will do. Uh, the skins also contain tannin, and color pigmentation, otherwise known as anthocyanin. Don't worry about that too much. You need to just mention it as color pigmentation. Color is found in the skins as well. So three things, flavor compounds, tannin, and then color pigmentation in the skins. Then a kind of waxy layer on the outside of the skin is what we call the bloom, sometimes also called the cutin, C-U-T-I-N. Now, the bloom is what's mentioned in your text, and that's fine by level three standards. So this waxy surface covers the skin of the grapes, and here, within this bloom, this waxy surface, uh, surface you'll find things like natural yeasts or ambient yeasts or wild yeasts, they're sometimes called as well. So, of course, if you uh, don't add in any yeasts at winemaking stage, you will be fermenting wild or with the natural yeasts. And that is a, a stylistic choice. That is a philosophical, a philosophical choice for the winemaker. It absolutely depends on the production, of course. Um, and that bloom, by the way, is naturally occurring and it's composed mostly of like a waxy uh, oleanonic acid, which helps protect the grapes against moisture loss. It's really an important factor in terms of um, sort of reducing transpiration. And that's why the maximum transpiration really comes up through the, the leaves of the vine, um, whereas this kind of waxy coating limits that uh, loss of water in the grape. Okay, so that is the blue. And then just a note on tannin, because we've mentioned this, and it's important that you understand that there really are three locations of the grape, three constituent parts of the grape, where tannin could be extracted in order for wine production. And that's what we've just listed here. And uh, we've gone through these before, but to recap, the seeds, remember, contain tannin. The stems contain tannin. And of course, the skins can contain tannin as well. The thicker the skins, often normally, the greater the tannin. Um, and tannin is basically a large number of chemical compounds. They accumulate before the raison, so that's color change. So they, they gain and accumulate before color change. And then uh, at that point, they are very bitter and astringent. 
Then after the raisin, they start to ripen and develop and the levels of bitterness and astringency will fall. And please note that it's not only the grape skins, stems and seeds where tannin in a wine can come from. You can also get tannin from oak as well. So white wines, red wines and even some rosés that are matured in oak will have potentially some tannin added via the oak vessel. OK, so that is the final part of that presentation, the constituent parts of a grape. The um, next part is the very important section looking at the role of oxygen and talking about things positively and negatively around it. Uh, so that will be only available to members of the e-learning portal, my e-learning portal, which you can find at winewithjimmy.com. So it's up there on the screen. You can also copy and paste that from the notes in the YouTube video below in the description section. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope you have found this useful. Uh, if you do have any comments or questions or concerns, do get in touch via commenting on this video on YouTube or by the social media you see at the bottom of each slide, or by directly at the website winewithjimmy.com. If you find yourself in my fair city of old London town, come and see us for a class, a glass, or a bottle. Thank you so much.